and welcome back to the What The Fork podcast and the first preview podcast of our return to the championship. It feels like only five minutes since Ross Stewart was back in the clincher at Wembley, but something to back at it as we open our season at the Stadium Light with a really tasty game against Coventry City on Sunday. And it's been a while since we've played any championship teams, and especially Coventry, for at least a couple of years. So to help me preview the game and let us know what we are going to be in for is Tom from Sky Blues Extra to talk us through Sunday's season opening. Well, first and foremost, Tom, how are you? Are you all right? Yeah, all good, Graham. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me on. Yeah, um, very much excited for the season to start. Um, it's been a it's been a nice break, but I'm, I'm ready for it now. And as you said, a very tasty opening game. So, for us to look forward to. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. When it came out, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot we hate each other. Shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Forgot about that. But um, I think first question, nice and easy one. Uh, you've kind of alluded to it a little bit there in the intro, but how much are Coventry fans looking forward to the season? Obviously, it's third championship season. You're, you're pretty much established now, so... Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, very excited for it. Um, you know, we've sort of gradually been improving year on year. First year back in the championship was was quite tough, and it was obviously the, the COVID year as well, so we couldn't sort of be at the ground. But last season was a, was a really good season, sort of in the top six for quite a lot of the season actually. And then we did fall away a little bit towards the end, but it was a, it was a really good season. Developed some some good players, um, young players. So I think everyone's quite excited. Um, I think the expectation level has gone up a little bit, which is always a little bit concerning in in some respects but nah i think everyone's um everyone's buzzing for it um and yeah there's some great some great games to look forward to so yeah we're all pretty excited and i think looking at the transfer window um it's been relatively active i think i counted six that you brought in obviously there's one that we will go further in depth on for obvious reasons but um it looks like you brought in more quality than quantity. Sometimes championship clubs can bring in sort of 10 players. It looks a little bit more like quality than quantity. What have Coventry fans and, and yourself made of uh, Mark Robbins' summer transfer business? Yeah, we're, we're, we're not a club who will go out and make, you know, 10, 15 sort of big signings. Um, it's sort of very, you know, incremental um, progress and recruitment. Um, we sort of, you know, we run quite a sustainable model, which I think is obviously great when you see some of the some of the mess, messes people are in, like, you know, the likes of Derby and Reading and Birmingham, etc. Um, so yeah, we've we've made a small number of signings. Um, we've just been adding some quality in some key areas, really. So um, we made a couple of good loan signings. Obviously, we'll come on to talk about Doyle, I'm sure. Um, Panzo as well in the def- defensive area. Um, a couple of a couple of young players going to the 23s as well. So the model we have is to bring you know bring players in, in into the 23s and then develop them, and then obviously that they, they become a bit of an asset for us. So we signed a couple of players like that as well. Um, but yeah, it hasn't been wholesale changes. I think the the key thing for this summer for us was keeping our good players. That's almost as good as new signings. Um, we kind of got the big three, as everyone's calling them, in Yokres, um, O'Hare and Hamer. And we've, uh, as we speak now, managed to hold on to all three of them. Um, and I think as the longer the window goes on, the less attractive any offers will be. So I think we're pretty happy with the business we've done. We've pro- we've got a left wing back due to come in in the next couple of days from Palace. He looks like a good player. Maybe want one more midfielder just to shore things up and have a bit of cover. But I'm I'm pretty happy to be honest with with the squad we've got. It's not going to be a massive squad, but I think that's the case for a lot of clubs. You know, it's it's hard to it's hard to build a really good big squad. So no, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we've done so far. I sort of alluded to it before. We're going to touch on him, but Callum Doyle obviously was a player that we know really well. I think it's fair to say he was a mainstay in, in our side for the first sort of six, at least seven months of the last season. Then when Alex Neal came in, he's, he's gone for experience and obviously we got promoted. But all in all, I think Sunderland fans would say we were quite happy with Callum and he was one of our better players in the, the start of the season. He was obviously making the step up. We kind of know a little bit about him. You've watched him in pre-season. Based on what you've seen of him, how excited are you by the sign of Callum Doyle? Yeah, really excited by him. I have to admit, when he first signed, I I didn't know a huge amount about him, but I was quite impressed with the number of games he played for you guys in League One. That's obviously always pretty good experience. And then, obviously, being 18, I thought that, obviously, it's quite young to be to be a sort of starting defender in the Championship. But then seeing him in the flesh, he's a big lad. You know, he's a big lad. So, even though he looks very young, he's actually, you know, he, he sort of, he, he's, um yeah, he's a sizable lad. Um yeah, I think he's. I think he's a really good player. He, he fits exactly the, the style we want to play, like playing out from the back and someone that's really comfortable with the ball at their feet. That's exactly what we need. It's the same while we've signed signed Panzo as well. Um, so yeah, I think I think he'll fit in well. Um, yeah, hopefully his experience from last season will will sort of carry him carry him well into this season. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how we get, how he gets on. 
I think he picked up a lot of experience with Sunderland as well. A lot of Sunderland fans are listening to that and say, well, the second half of the season, he was, to use a word, packed. He was absolutely knackered. And you could tell yeah. this 17, 18 year old kid was was tired. But I mean, you'll know as well as we do, League One is a slog and the kind of yeah. experience you have got from that. But it's funny you alluded to the way that he looks. He does look a little bit like Justin Bieber with <laughs> enter any big, massive old centre half with huge thighs sort of body. Yeah. I said Paul Butler last season, Sunderland fans will understand where I'm coming from with that. But I mean, outside of Sunday, I do. I think Sunderland fans will generally hope that Callum does really well. Um, yeah. A few people quite surprised he went to Coventry because of obvious reasons and we know the history. I won't go into it. Um, but he probably think, doesn't know the history. <laughs> no, I don't think he does. I don't think he does. He probably wasn't even born by the time the exactly. second time happened if everyone knows what we're talking about. But um, yeah. yeah, I think I think to be fair, Callum will do really well and I think we we really hope he does. And he did play a massive part, although he didn't play much towards the end of last season. And I think he will mould into either a lower half Premier League centre half or a very good championship centre half. Just his pace is the only thing. Yeah. Um, I think in regards to Coventry as a whole, you've now been in the championship it's coming into your, your third season. We're entering, entering sorry, our first second tier season in I think it's five years now we're talking, uh, four or five years. The championship, we were in it for a season. We had a terrible season and fell through. Our experience of the championship is really, really minimal. For Southern fans listening, what, what should we expect for the first season back in comparison to what we've been used to in League One? Yeah, it's the, I would say the, the first season back, I mean, our first season back from League One, it was it was tough. It's it is a bit of a slog like it is in League One, but obviously a bit more, a bit more quality. Um it is it is a tough league. It's definitely tough. Um but having said that, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of teams in trouble in the league. So, you know, if you if you've got your finances in order and you've you know you've got a decent decent enough side, you can you can definitely, you know, stay up and solidify yourself in the league. Um and even looking at the other end of the table as well, there's not there's not so many, there's not loads of teams that you're like, they're definitely going to go up. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but we, we we did our preseason pod last night and we were saying, apart from sort of West Brom and Sheffield United, there's there's not like some, there's not really good quality teams in the league. Even the teams coming down from the Prem, I, I don't really think they're going to do particularly well. I don't think Burnley, I think Burnley could possibly even go all the way through. But um, so, yeah, so I think you've probably got a good enough chance of um, sort of establishing yourselves and, I think the key in the first season back is just to make sure you stay up and, you know, you just gain enough points and, you know, the, people always want that like promotion bounce of trying to get into the playoffs. But I think <laughs> you just want to make sure, you, you know, you, you're in order, you're not overspending and, and you can just sort of, um, yeah, establish yourselves in the league. I think it's interesting you touched on sort of the, maybe the golf and how it's not that big. There's a few fans I've spoken to just like casually and they've said, you know, the golf's not that massive. You've got a few top quality teams that you'll get battered off, but then you'll go and win it like a team you don't expect to win. And I think one thing that's beneficial for Sunderland fans is we took in, obviously we're taking up Patrick Roberts, we're taking up Pritchard, we've taken up we've taken up players that we took a chance on in League One due to injury, lack of form, but our championship players on the whole, I think Coventry did very, very similar and kept that nucleus of the squad. And, yeah. and even looking at the squad now, it's not hugely different to the team we played two years ago. How big is that gulf between League One and, and the championship? There, there is there is a bit of a gulf. Um, you know, you do get there are some top 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 players in the in the championship, so um, you do sort of notice the gulf. Of spe- I mean, I'm ju- I'm definitely thinking of the season when we our first season in the championship a couple of years ago. Like Norwich had an unbelievably good team, players like Buendia and Pukki and players like that. Um, I'm trying to think who else was in the league at the time, but yeah, there was some, there were some really good players and. You obviously get the teams that come down with their parachute payments. They have the ability to to sign really well. But having said that, down the other end of the league, there is some there are some teams that are are really poor. Um, I mean, teams like Birmingham, for example. I mean, they were lucky to stay up last season. They pretty much only stayed up because other teams were worse off in terms of points deduction. So, but having but your point about the, the the results you see in the league, it is it's absolutely bonkers. Like I think we had last season, we lost. I think it was five nil away at. Luton and then we beat Fulham 4-1 on the, at, the, at the weekend so it's just nonsense like it's crazy so you, you'll probably find you'll, you'll you'll see stuff like that happen you'll go and like beat Norwich away or something and then you'll lose at home to like you know a team you'd expect to be it's, it's a mad league but it makes it exciting yeah it does I, th- I think to be fair watching the championship from afar is always quite exciting because of that and even going back to that one random season we had I remember we got beat, it felt like about 25 games on the bounce. I'm sure that's not accurate, but 
then we went to Derby, who at the time were promotion chasing and, and won four one, and we were like, "Hang on, we can stay up." Then just got beat for the rest of the season and went down. Um, so yeah, it does feel like the championships like that. But with Coventry, you sort of alluded to it a little bit about the looking at maybe the playoffs. Obviously, you finished two seasons, both the, the positions you finished in, I would say, of class you was established. I think a couple yeah. of years ago, I would have seen Coventry as a League One side because you were in League One, because anyone can go up from League One at a point. Now you look like an established championship side with a manager that you're all happy with, that you're ready to push forward with. What would be a, a good finish for Coventry this season? Obviously, you look at playoffs and promotion, but what would be classed as a successful season? I think for us, it's just it's just improving on last season. I think if we finish one point better off than last year, we genuinely would see it as an improvement because even just to finish mid-table, like, you know, to be established is an achievement in itself. So I think most fans would say they'd be pretty happy to be finishing, you know, mid-table, a slight improvement on last year. Um, that's probably, yeah, so it's like head versus heart, isn't it? And then, you know, but then I think when you're at that point on that sort of 65 mark you're not you're not that far off the playoffs. So then you think, you know, a couple of extra wins or a bit more in the tank, then you can make a push. So I think it's about starting the season well, making sure that, you know, we're definitely going to be, you know, safe. We're definitely going to be aiming for, for mid-table or above. And then you never know if you have a good run in or, you know, you make a couple of good signs in January or you keep your best players fit. You can definitely have a bit of a charge. Um, I mean, you look at like Huddersfield and Luton last year, you know, if they can if they can get in the playoffs, then I think it gives anyone anyone hope in the league. I think Huddersfield finished twentieth the season before, and then finished third. I mean, that's I don't know if anyone's ever done that before, but that's that's madness. So, yeah, I think we've got I think we've got a genuine chance of getting in the playoffs. But we're I think Cov fans are fairly grounded that you know a mid table finish would also be would be fine. The funny one with Coventry because I mean, going back a few years ago, you know, when Sunderland first went into League One. I wouldn't have classed Coventry as anything other than a former Premier League side that is struggling in League One, like a sportsman and all that kind of stuff. Then you got promoted and you kind of forget everything that Coventry sort of had in the past five to 10 years, the change of ground, um, all those things that happened that were just not stable, long story short. Is there almost an element of like calmness now at Coventry that you're just a normal football club? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, we... Um... Yeah, we have to keep sort of like reminding ourselves that things are pretty good now because you do get bogged down in the in the season and you'll have bad results and you know we'll be doing our podcast getting quite frustrated. But then we have to just remind ourselves actually, if we think about where we were five years ago, this this was a dream. You know, being established in the championship it sounds silly, but playing at our own ground as well. Like most people take that for granted. You know, we for a lot of the last ten years we haven't been stable, and now we've got a ten year deal. At, at our own ground which you know which should be a thing anyway um but yeah it, i think it does it does feel quite calm now um there's been a lot of work behind the scenes our ceo dave body's done a, a lot of really good work just just a lot of different things like obviously the state getting the stadium sorted was 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 key the kits have been really good like we've got record season ticket sales like there's just a lot of like good things behind the scenes and then obviously that just translates onto the pitch in terms of the players we're signing. Mark Robbins is obviously a really good manager. We've got a very good recruitment team that, that are great at spotting talent and, and moving, you know, moving talent through the club. So yeah, I think we're getting quite a lot of things right at the moment. And that's culminating in us, you know, being established in the championship for sure. You touched on Mark Robbins there. And I think when you look through clubs that have had a manager for longer than a year, you, you kind of get double figures just. Um, a lot of managers come and go really quickly across every division and across every league. Mark Robbins has been there a good old while now, and I think there's been people that have tried to come in for him. He's turned them down or you've knocked back their advances. Are Coventry a testament to sticking by your manager and sticking with the project? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I think I think he likes it here because like every every sort of achievement is there's not like there's not like a huge expectation on his shoulders. So I think even Sunderland came in for him at one point, probably I think in league, yeah, it would have been in League One. When we were still in League One, I'm not sure. It was when we um, went for Parkinson. I think we had a look at Robbins, yeah, Ainsworth, and then it. we got Parkinson, but less of that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think with a club like Sunderland, I think there would have been a big expectation. It would have been like, you know, we have to get promoted. The promotion has to be the goal. Whereas with us, even when even the season when we won League One, that wasn't the expectation. Like the expectation wasn't to go up. Like we we were aware that we'd made some good summer signings and we we had a good feeling about the season, but no Coventry fan would have told you we were going to win that division. Um, so I think he, he, I think he likes being at a club where 
there's not a massive expectation. Like this season, we're not saying we have to be promoted. We're just happy if we finish mid-table. And I think that suits him a little bit. Um, and yeah, he's obviously just got the whole like infrastructure with the recruitment and everything. Like he's got a really good number two as well. Um, so everything's set up really well for him. Um, and and I don't re- I don't really know where he'd go from here. It's, it's kind of a strange one, isn't it? It's like, I don't think he'd want to go to another championship team that, that that they have to get promoted. That's a lot of pressure. Would want to go into the Premier League? I don't know. It's it just feels right at the moment that he's at Coventry, and who knows how long he'll stay. But yeah, I think obviously his, his ultimate goal will be to get us back to the Premier League, and then he'll feel like the project's completed. Um, and I don't know if I don't know if there's a is there a manager out there who's done League Two to the Premier League? I can't think. If there, the, the probably will probably Chris is. Chris Wilder, I'm not sure. maybe off the top of my head, maybe Chris Wilder. Yeah, possibly. Maxine. But I can't yeah. think of many more outside of that. Yeah, at one um, club as well, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think looking through your squad, it, it's interesting for me, and I touched on it a little bit before, the amount of players that are still there that I recognise from when we were playing each other in the um, in League One. And you've got the likes of Dom Hyam, Matt Godden's still there, even McFadden's still there as well, who obviously yeah. not getting any younger, but he's still there. They're names that spring to mind when you, you look at players that we recognise from League One. Obviously, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name, but there's a Swedish boy up front that used to be a, um, I think, a Jokerath. target for us. That's the guy, Jogger. I didn't, see, I just yeah. I knew it. I just had to test it. Don't worry, everyone gets it wrong. Even Coventry fans get it wrong. <laughs> it just, yeah, I, I was not going to even attempt that. But he scored, obviously, 18 goals last season. There's yeah. a lot of people that will recognise the name of Gordon because the goals he scored in League One. But who are the players that something should be looking out for, the ones that maybe we don't know about? Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's the, the kind of big three is that they're, they're, they're called within the Coventry fans. You've got um, Callum O'Hare, who you, you might have heard of. He's an attacking midfielder for us actually just fended off quite a few bids from Burnley for him in the last couple of weeks. So it looks like he'll be staying. He's definitely one to watch out for. Um, really exciting player, really sort of makes us tick. Needs to add some goals to his game. And if he does this season, he's going to be a serious player. I, I think we'd probably struggle to keep hold of him, to be honest, if that happened. Um, Jokeres, as you mentioned, um, yeah, 18 goals last season. Really strong, powerful, big lad up front. Um very, very, very good player. Hopefully, he can he can keep his form up. Um, there's uh, Gustavo Hamer as well, who's more of a more of a defensive midfielder. He really sort of yeah, he really controls the midfield. Um, he's definitely one to watch out for. Um, I'm trying to think who else we've got that would be. We've got a good goalkeeper, Simon Moore as well. He he's a decent shot stopper. Um, yeah, all round a good team. Like you say, quite a few players from the League One team as well um, that have all just kicked on really well. I think that was the question mark when we went up. It was like players like McFadden, Hyam, will they be able to do it in the championship? I think mcfadstein has got better and better, really. He, his first season in the championship, he made a few mistakes, but last year he was absolutely solid. And it's almost like this level suits him better in a way. So, certain players like that. And Matty Godden's just an absolute like natural finisher like, at whatever level. So you put a ball in the right position for him and he'll he'll score every single time wherever whatever level he's playing at so um so yeah no it's uh it's it's an exciting team it's funny that the season you went up we actually took obviously two players from you the summer beforehand in Lee Birchu he's got his detractors he did a job um, and I wish him very much well um it's had some really good games but Jordan Willis was probably the standout one who if I'm honest with you, I, I really like Jordan. I think he obviously did really well at Coventry. He's really, really well liked there as well. But he's had a horrendous time with injuries. And unfortunately, he got released in the summer because he hasn't played for the best part of two years. Um, from a perspective of a Coventry fan looking at what's happened to Jordan Willis, and fingers crossed, you know, he does come back and he does get his fitness back and he, he plays to the standard he could. Is it a bit of a shame looking back at Jordan Willis and seeing like where he's at at the moment because he's a, he's come through your academy. He's obviously had a lot of, a lot of potential when he came to Sunderland as well. Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a massive shame for sure. Um, I, I really rated Jordan Willis. I always thought he was a, a really good player. So quick as well. Like one of the quickest players I've seen, I think, play for us. Um, of course, and it's someone who comes to your academy, you're always going to look out for them. Obviously, he went to Sunderland, which, you know, made a few Coventry fans sort of dislike him to an extent. But I think he got booed when we played you. At, I think, was it at home or where? I remember. I remember him getting booed at some point and I was a bit like, we can't boo the lad. Like he's one of he's one of our own, and he's and he scored at Wembley in the League Two playoff final. He scored the opening goal that got us on the way. So, you know, it's memories like that. Um, but yeah, and no, I'm 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 very disappointed for him to be fair because I, I thought 
even though it was Sunderland, I thought it was a good move for him anyway, because I thought if he can really establish himself and and sort of prove it, prove what he's about, that he could get he could get the sort of big move he wanted. Um, obviously, it hasn't quite worked out for him, but fingers crossed he can he can find another club at the right kind of level and kick off because he's probably not not too old at this point, is he? 26, so, 27 max. Yeah, maybe. so he's still got a bit of time left. So fingers crossed he can, you know, make the best out of the you know the career that he's got left. Because yeah, I definitely rate him as a player. Yeah, if he gets fit for me, he's, he's at least championship level. And yeah. I, I doubt he's yeah, listening. But that. on the off chance you are, Jordan, you're welcome on the podcast. And I hope you do very well in your further <laughs> career. Um on the Sunderland itself, it feels, if I'm honest with you, a bit surreal, which kind of shows you how much of a slog the last four years have been to be readying ourselves for a second tier um, campaign, a championship campaign as opposed to a League One purgatory. Um, I've listened to a lot of preview shows. I've listened to a lot of Sunderland fans, and I think a lot of us would be quite happy if we just were 15. That That's fine. Like, safe from, I mean, if we go up, brilliant, that'd be amazing. But if you finish 15th, safe, no relegation, couple of good results and build on it, similar to what you've done yourselves, fantastic. Some pundits away from Sunderland I've kind of thought we could maybe do that thing where the momentum just carries us on and get promoted. I don't think anyone's really sure what's going to happen with Sunderland. From a Coventry perspective, what do you think our chances are this season? Can we replicate yourself and Blackburn and establish ourselves? Can we do more or are we just going to go straight back down? I So my honest perception was, and we did actually chat about this on our podcast yesterday, is... I think there's that perception that because because obviously you've got a huge fan base and you've got, you know, there's going to be, I'm sure you'll have massive, you're probably the biggest, well, it will be the biggest crowds in the division next season at home. I guess that makes people think that there'll be that kind of promotion bounce. I think in reality, you'll probably feel the sort of like, you'll feel a bit like you're, you've got a bit of development to go and you need some more players in and you need a couple of years in the division to sort of establish yourself. So I, I certainly don't think you'll go down. I think there's there's a there's definitely worse teams, and I mean not even worse teams. There's teams that will get points deductions. You know, we we keep having a bit of a laugh on our pod saying that you know if you just keep your finances in order, you're basically guaranteed safety, pretty much. That, honestly, it's that it's that mad now because I think it was it was Derby and Reading last year. Yeah, Reading are still in lots of trouble. Birmingham are in a lot of trouble. I think I heard somewhere there was like five or six teams with potential deductions, which is just crazy. So. I think, you know, I think you've you definitely got enough to stay up. My gut feel is maybe it'd be a bit a bit too soon to be having a, a playoff push, but I think definitely a mid-table finish is definitely, definitely doable. Um, you know, I think if I think the, the big crowds at home will help and, you, you know, your home form will, will probably, um, you know, help you to, to get towards that mid-table. So, yeah, I, that's probably, if I was going to predict the table, I probably would be putting Sunderland somewhere around mid-table, I'd say. Yeah, I think we'd all take that, to be fair. In terms of playing Sunderland, I think you touched on it before, like it's sometimes hard for us to say, but we are, if not the biggest one of the biggest in this league, and people can debate that as much as want we are. Um, from a common reef perspective, it's a tasty game. We touched on that in the intro because of historical reasons. I do, none of us need to go into that. We know what it is. Um, and for anyone listening, we are kicking off at 12, not quarter past 12. Um, for anyone wondering, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I had to get it in. Um, <laughs> but I think... From a Coventry perspective, there'd be a part of me that would prefer to play something later on in the campaign. Do Coventry feel that like same way or is it a good challenge for you? Yeah, I, I probably would say that, to be honest. I think, yeah, when the fixtures came out, it was like, again, it was like head versus heart a little bit. It was like, a, as a fan for a game to go to, it's a great, it's a great, you know, it's a great away day for us. And I mean, it's a bit annoying, it's 12 o'clock on a Sunday, but it's a great away day for us to go to. And obviously, you know, I'm sure the atmosphere will be unbelievable. Um, so from that point of view, I was very excited about it. And then sort of, I guess, reality sets in of like, you obviously want to start the season well. And actually, if you if you looked at all the away trips for the season in terms of difficulty, you would probably say like Sunderland's one of the, one of the more t- tough places to go, especially with it being the first game of the season. So I'm sure your fans are going to be well up for it, um, being back in the, you know, being back in the championship. So I think it's a tough game for us but but then equally I think it it works both ways because I think I, I, oh, I think I watched one of your um one of your fans doing like the fixture th- reveal thing and they were saying oh that's like a tough a tough start to the season as well so I think it goes both ways I think the home crowd can lift you but it also can work against you if you know the game doesn't start how you want or we get an early goal or whatever happens so that uh, it can work both ways I think it's it's probably equally tough for both teams um, but it should be a, it should be a great occasion. Yeah, I, I think it's a perfect start for us. It was weird that we did like a 
when the fixtures came out, we did live reaction to it, similar to what you mentioned there. And Coventry came out and it was like, oh, brilliant. And then you were like, oh, I would have preferred Birmingham <laughs> or Redden. Um, that would have yeah. been preferable. But I think it will be a, a really great occasion. And I think I've got to be fair to you and say, I know you haven't watched this for the past couple of years. So disclaimer, obviously, you probably haven't watched a great deal of something and that's to be expected. But going into the game on um, Sunday, who are the players that you think can cause you problems? Where you maybe particularly weak and we look particularly strong? Where could we cause you problems? Yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know. I haven't looked into your team too much, but I did I did watch a bit of the playoffs, to be fair, because I absolutely, absolutely love the playoffs. Um, obviously, Ross Stewart scored for you in, in those playoffs, and he, I think he got a pretty good goal tally um, last season in League One. So he's obviously someone to watch out for. Um, yeah, I think... It's it's really hard to it's really hard to predict. It's one of those where because obviously we we've had a good preseason as well, but you you just quite, never quite know. I I think we've got a good quality team, but we're not one hundred percent sure who's going to start. Um, so it, it is a tricky one to predict um, where the game's going to be won and lost. I'd say um, I think it's probably going to come down to you know who, who's up for it the most, who, who has a a fast start in the game as well. And like I said, with the home crowd as well, that's something we can maybe play on. To try and go go for it early doors, um, so yeah, it's it's all it's they're always tough to call, but especially at the start of the season with a team who's just been promoted as well, it's it could literally go either way for me. I did feel like I was asking you sort of a million dollar question there because like I know <laughs> bugger all about the championship, if I'm completely honest, because we're in, in it for a season, weren't in in it ten years prior, then just fell through it drastically badly and haven't been in it for four years. So yeah, yeah it's a little bad. bit the same. Yeah. I'm starting to pick up my own, what was the championship like again? Um, yeah. It's funny when I look back at games against Coventry in recent years, one really sticks out. Um, I was actually in Sweden that day and my battery ran out and I thought, oh, before I even kick off, and I thought, oh, hopefully we're winning. Went and locked on my phone and it was 3-3 and then charged it in a, a burger shop and watched the second half on a stream in Sweden and seen us lose 5-4. Absolutely yeah. bizarre and mental game, which basically sc- it sums up League One a lot for us in the first couple of years. And it was an awful day, dead sunny, terrible defence and really, really wrecked our promotion hopes at the time. Thankfully, that's in the past. But I'm going to ask you to make a prediction. I don't think it's going to be a 5-4. Um, if it is, please, it'll be the opposite side. Um, <laughs> I only got five right last season. I got three or four right the season prior. So whatever I predict is likely to be wrong. But what do you think the score is going to be on time for Hat to push you for one? Yeah, I'll, I'll have. I'll think. I was just going to say on that um, that five four. It's funny how how you describe it because I think if you ask Conch fans, they'll be saying words like amazing, unbelievable. Like it was a, it, it, I agree, it was a bizarre game. But what? Yeah, I mean that will that will stick in my memory for a long time. That game, I was not too for the wrong reasons. Unbelievable <laughs> way. <to think. laughs> yeah, um, predictions wise, oh, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, I think like you like head over heart here. I, I reckon it'll probably be like a one-one draw. I think, I think it's one of those games where both teams won't go for it too much, and I think we'd probably both be happy just to start the season on, you know, getting a point. And as away from home, uh, in a, you know, a tricky away day, I think for you, just starting off positively and not, you know, not having a loss on the first day. So, I think it'll probably end up being a, being a one-one draw. Is is my guess? I actually have that in my head, but I'm going to lie to myself and go with my heart. Um, and I'm going to say 1-0 Sunderland with a Patrick Roberts goal. But if anyone's listening, technically you've got two predictions. My head's saying 1-1. I agree with you 100%, but I yeah. can't start the season with anything less than a prediction for a win. Um, I think the more we get into the championship, the more people are going to enjoy listening to opposition uh, views and things like that. Occasionally we've had opposition fans, not just for the preview shows, but also for the review shows. And it's always interesting to hear how people view your team the other way around, especially in these preview shows. But for the people who maybe want to listen to your stuff after the game and your, the Coventry review, see how you view it rather than just us, please listen to us first. Um, where can we find your podcast and, and where can we follow you on Twitter? Yeah, so the page is called Sky Blues Extra. Um, we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and uh, we do a, a weekly podcast. So, we'll, we, as I said, we've just done our, our preseason preview, which we talked about the Sunderland game on. That should be out at the weekend. And then we'll do a, a review. Um, it'll probably be on Monday or Tuesday, obviously following the Sunday game, to go into all the action. But available on all the usual um, channels, so Spotify, Anchor, Apple Apple Music, everything like that. So, yeah, feel free to to give it a, a listen after the game, and hopefully, we'll we won't be too down in the dumps because we've got a decent result. <laughs> 
Tom, I thank you very much for popping on. I wish you absolutely zero luck when it comes to Sunday, but that's to be un- understood and expected. Um, but thanks for coming on. Thanks for giving us a lowdown on things that we don't know much about at the moment. Hopefully we'll learn more as we go along to a fantastic second promotion for someone, um, which I'll probably come back to in May and think, what was I thinking? Um, but Tom, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, cheers, Graham. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.